Hello friends, my name is Enoch Leffingwell and today I'm going to be telling you about how Little Light Studios Battlefield Hollywood changed my life forever by helping me to quit video games. And in, from, in my story goes, from age 11 to 16 I was very depressed and I was just going throughout life. I had no aim, I had no purpose and I was just tired and I didn't know um, what to do with my life and so instead to try to cope with the depression I resorted to video games as my escape, as my distraction from this world and I realized that as long as I could be in front of a screen playing video games it's like I can turn off the, the tormenting thoughts, the sorrow, the, the, the pain and just kind of escape in this, in this world that I didn't have to think about life or deal with life's challenges and it wasn't until I was 16, I was, I was at a party, I was getting drunk and high with some friends and I just hit rock bottom and I realized I've never been this low. I was the worst that I've ever been in my entire life. And then it's like there was something that asked the question, when were you the happiest? And instantly I remembered, it was when I was on fire for Christ. And I was like, wait a second. You mean to tell me I had the most joy, the most peace, the most happiness when I was on fire for Christ? Because that is the furthest thing than where I am today. And I'm like, wow, I always heard that God is a God of love. And I figured, well, if God truly loved me, he would want me always to have that peace and that joy. If I had it before and it fizzled away and it just wasn't lasting, then the problem was probably not with, with God, but it was with me. So I want to know what can I do to have a relationship with God. I went to this Christian youth camp and there was this man who was just beaming with the love of God. And he's like, friends, young people, God has a plan for your life. If you would follow his plan for your life, you can experience this joy that is unspeakable. And I, I could see, I'm like, I want what he has. And he... Um, I remember talking after the after his talk I was talking with him and I was telling him about the video games we were playing and he I just remember his reaction it was just like even just the thought of killing someone on a screen horrifies me I would I, I couldn't do that and I remember thinking with my friend I was like whoa either this man is an extremist or maybe I'm too desensitized and it really got me thinking. That night, I was praying to God so wholeheartedly, so earnestly, and I was praying, I was saying, Lord, what must I do to have a relationship with you? And I knew at that moment that whatever, by the nature of my question, whatever he said, that if I didn't do that, I may never have a relationship with God. But I wanted it. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I prayed and I was saying, Lord, I want this. What is preventing me from having a relationship with you? And he told me two things. I had to quit playing video games and I had to change my friends. And I was just like, oh. It felt as though God was asking me to go up to a, a precipice and to just fall backwards and allow God to, to trust God to catch me. And I, it was just so intense because you have to understand the video games for me was my coping mechanism for depression it was the only thing that I had that gave me a semblance of happiness and God was saying you know the thing the thing that you cling on to so much the thing that you spend so much time the thing that you go to as your comforter I want that if you want a relationship with me then you have to accept me as your comforter you have to spend more time with me. You have to learn to trust me. And I was just like, oh. And it was one of the, I'm telling you, quitting video games for me was one of the most difficult decisions of my life. But it was the best decision of my life. And in, from going home from that camp, that youth camp, I was just like, all right. I look back at my history, I'm like, I have nothing to lose but pain, misery, and sorrow. And I looked into the future and I saw the promises of God and the potential of a relationship with Christ and the joy and the peace. And I'm like, I've got eternal life to gain. What's, 
can I lose? So I didn't just dip my toe in the water. I cannonballed in and I was ready to go. I just went home and I quit cold turkey. I watched, um, I sold all of my video games. It was right after Black Friday. I had the games for like two days. They were like the best games out there. And in four days, I had $700 of all these things that I just sold. And I'm like, what am I going to do with my time? And I figured, well, if I'm going to start, st um, if I'm going to be a Christian, I guess rather than just twiddling my thumb all day with all this free time, maybe I should just pick up my Bible and start reading. So as I started to study, I found in God's Word a divine Savior that satisfied all my needs. And in doing that, there was, I went to church, I shared my testimony, and a faithful church member, he gave me, he, he told me about Battlefield Hollywood. He told me about Little Light Studios, which is a ministry that helps young people like me and maybe you to be able to find victory over the, the clenches of these controllers and the video games that are taking place. And, and they have uh, the Battlefield Hollywood, which going through their testimonies and showing how they were all wrapped up in Hollywood and how God had led them out step by step. And now God is using their, their, what the talents and the passions, the interests they had in this battlefield, in this Hollywood scene, now they're using these talents for videography and video editing and media for Jesus, for helping to proclaim liberty to the captives like me. And they put together this other series called Controller. This is a three-part series that goes into the history of video games. When I was going through this, I saw, I understood more about how Nintendo got started as a card, a card playing, um, company and how they were outlawed in Japan and I began to realize the origins of this and the artificial atmosphere and how uh, these these uh, things were just opening to my mind. I started finding the answer like in Romans chapter 1 verse 28 through 32 it describes how you who knowing the judgment of God you not only commit these sins but you have pleasure in them that do them. And it made me realize, it's like, wow, all of these sins that I'm seeing on these, on these screens and these uh, video games, not only do I know that it, it's not just like, oh, that's a screen and then I'm me, but, I, but they were showing the science with mirror neurons that we actually do not have that uh, disconnect between what we see on a screen and us actually doing it. So God doesn't want us to be looking at these different things on the screen. And I was amazed. I, I really like the DVDs that they have. And going through them was transformative to my life. In this time, it was one of the best things that could have ever happened to me. And it gave me the strength. It gave me the understanding, not just what I needed to do to have a relationship with God, but why I needed to, to get rid of the media of this world and this, and to to step out of this battlefield Hollywood that I could really have a relationship. And what I found is that part of the, in, in hindsight, I realized it's this time. It, time is what we need in order to develop a relationship with anyone. And it's no different with our Heavenly Father. In order for me to, to maintain a consistent relationship with, with God, I needed to be able to spend more time with Him and through His Word, but the video games were distracting me from the Word of God. The more that I played, the less interested I was in truth, in reading of eternal things. The more fictitious things that I filled my mind with, it made it harder to pray. Because when I would pray, I remember just seeing explosions and I'd see scenes of videos and, and movies. and. And I'm just like, man, I don't like praying in church because this stuff is boring. And, but then I realized that when, when I started to get that out of my life, then I can enjoy a conversation with God. I can hear His voice more speaking clearly to me. And in God's Word, I found it to be the voice of God speaking to my soul. I found a divine Savior that satisfied all of my needs. And I'm so thankful for the Little Eye Studios ministry and to be able to to go through these. You've got to check out these DVDs. you got to go over to Little Light Studios, support their ministry, buy their DVDs. It's going to make an impact 
not just in your life, but even for your friends and for others who you care about. You can get that, send them as a gift to others. That's what it was for me. Someone gifted me this DVD and it changed my world. I started to look up more and I, and I wanted to understand. And um, in, in doing that, I ended up, buy, when I sold all those video games, I read this book that, that changed the world, I mean, changed my world, and it was called uh, the National Sunday Law Book, and it was amazing. There, I learned more about prophecy and what the, um, the Word of God says on these different current events that are taking place right now that involve all of us. And I was so interested. I saw on page 70 that I could buy a thousand of these for 50 cents. I was like, what? So I went, and with that money from the video games, I bought a thousand of these books, and I started going door to door, house to house, and everyone in my school that I could possibly get to sit down and be like, hey, you want to study with me? I just found, I just found Christ, and I'm so excited. Can I share with you what I've learned? And we'd just sit down, we'd go through studies, and we would, we would read the book. We had book reading clubs, and it was amazing. The, the money for the video games I dedicated to Lord's service, and since then, I've been doing uh, full-time evangelism, gospel work, Bible studies. Immediately, the time that I was spending in playing video games, I ended up preoccupying my time with more meaningful recreation and, a, and something so much better. I don't need to distract my mind anymore because I have a purpose. I'm on a mission. I want to help every young person to identify their unique talents and encourage them to dedicate to the Lord's service. That's why we started the Army of Youth. Because this ministry has a vision. We see a world where never again does a young person lead an aimless life. Never again do where we see a world where every young person knows their unique talents and leads meaningful lives in the Lord's service. And we're not going to stop until this vision is seen. And, I, and if it were not for Little Light Studios, then I know it I could have been still sitting on the couch struggling. It could have been one of those times, just like before, where I resolved to quit, but I didn't have the strength. It wasn't until I started to study, understanding why these things are not things that are going to help me in walking closer with God. It wasn't until I educated myself on what Little Light Studios has to share. That's when I found victory. That's when the chains were lifted. It's like Jesus said in, in the book of John, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free and you'll be free indeed. So I'm, I'm really encouraged about that. It was in uh, 2018 in August, we ended up, we were doing a speaking tour and we were interviewing different ministries and seeing what they were doing and, and trying to uh, understand some models for ministry so that we can um, we, what we like to do is we like to interview those age and experience in the Lord's work and connect them with the youth and the inexperienced. We see in this army of youth, it's an army of workers as our youth rightly trains. But it's not going to be inexperienced youth teaching inexperienced youth. We see a co-laboring together of multi-generations. Those who have been years in the ministry, who are mentoring, who are taking under the wing, who are rightly training the youth to be able to be effective gospel workers. We see that we need to work together in order for the work of God to be accomplished on earth. So as we were going through that summer, we were interviewing different directors of ministries. We made a stop over by uh, Little Light Studios at the time. They were in Tennessee. And we were able to, to go there. We've had some interactions before. They heard my testimony and they wanted to, inter they wanted to record my testimony. And I was, as I was there, you can see some photos on the screen that uh, we, we went over to their office and we were able, they showed us their studio, they showed us how they record and where they record, and it was a blessing. We sat down, shared my testimony, got to meet everybody on, on the team, and it was a huge encouragement. You can see the photo um, of us at the door with the Little Life Studios. It, it, was, it was truly um, meaningful to me to have that opportunity to let the team know that what you're doing matters. And if, you, and if you're from Little Light Studios, I want you to, I want to say thank you for committing yourself to this work and choosing to serve God with your talents. Because of this ministry, I learned too, when I was at home and I was praying to God and I heard a sermon on evangelism, I was just thinking, 
I, I realize my need to share with others, but I realize that for most of my life I wasted playing video games. I had no talents, I had no skills, I had nothing to offer God except for my heart. I got on my knees and I prayed and I said, Lord, I have nothing to give you but my heart. I see the call to ministry, I see the need apparent everywhere. I'm willing. And at that moment God showed me it was an internet ministry that led me to the Lord. Why can't I use an internet ministry through you to lead others to the Lord? And then I realized those skills, the time on the computer, the, the efforts and energy that I, I spent in Satan's kingdom in this battlefield that was being working for the enemy, God was able to redeem those talents and redeem those skills. And where now we have, I've, I've been in full-time ministry for the last eight years working in media ministry, working with young people, teaching them how to share their faith with others, and being able to speak at churches and camp meetings and prayer lines. And, and the Lord has blessed tremendously. But I realized that if we don't use the talents that God has given us, then that's part of the reason why we live aimless lives. But we are redeemed for service. God has called us for a holy purpose. And it's not enough just to quit the things that distract us. We need to replace them with something better. We need to find meaningful work, something to do for our master's cause. And that is when we have a joy and a peace and a love that is just unexplainable. So people can go to you and say, whatever you have, that's what I want. So I, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm excited that I get to share this testimony with you because I know these these DVDs have changed my life. You've got to check them out, as well as they have a series of DVDs, and I, I watch them all. Some of them I watch several times. Sometimes I invite people over, we watch them. They're powerful tools for evangelism, they're powerful tools for sharing with others. Go check, if you're not familiar with Little Light Studios, check them out and be blessed. They also have a Patreon. If you go to patreon.com forward slash Little Light Studios, you will we'll have it on the screen. You can also help them in supporting their ministry and to be able to reach more souls like me because they're doing a good work. We definitely want to support that. And, um, and if you want to know more about the Army of Youth, you can go to thearmyofyouth.com where we help young people identify their unique talents and encourage them to dedicate to the Lord's service. We've got trainings how to study the Bible, how to spend more time with Jesus, how to, how to make your devotions irresistibly interesting. This is what we love helping people to understand so that they can come closer and closer to God. And I just want to encourage you that sometimes you feel inadequate. Sometimes you feel that you have nothing to offer God. But remember, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the calls. Thank you for watching.